What's going on everyone? So today I'm going to show you how I created this travel website using React and Gatsby. So right now you can see here's a little design with a hero background video playing and then when I go ahead and click refresh we actually have some animation so it actually fades up and then typical you know hover right here and then if I were to scroll down you can see we got little cards and they also animated as I went and scrolled down as well and these are just like typical cards uh, or like images I guess you could say and then I'll scroll down here the little testimonial section notice how it like slid into and also if I go back and redo it you can see it there and also these images are optimized with Gatsby so if I were to like right click and hit inspect you can see in here in the actual elements tab that this is utilizing Gatsby image and also these images up here as well if I were to click here and just click on any of them you can see that they're utilizing Gatsby images so it automatically optimizes it already so you don't have to do that manually and then I can scroll down here we got just typical like stats uh, you know why they would choose this company just typical info section here and then we got another animation with a little input or email sign up form here and then also you can just like type in and then uh, I'm gonna actually ask you to put your email address if you hit sign up, but I'm just gonna keep it like this. And then we got the little footer section here. And then also, if I were to change the uh, page, for instance, so I can click, click travel. Now you can see that it updates to a new page. And then notice that the actual nav bar changed. If I go back, it's currently transparent. Click about, for instance, here's just another page. You know, just I just replaced and um, refactored everything. And you can see here we got like that and then these are all working too and ideally you replace the content here with your own content and even here you can see it like this and then also if i were to scroll and shrink this it is more responsive too so this is a tablet version right here you can see that the images actually they are wider they span majority width of the screen and then also you can see we got the uh different positioning here and then let me shrink it to the smaller version and we got a little mobile menu and then also these would actually change according to the uh the page that you choose etc and you can see it's like this and then let me just go ahead and inspect this for you so let me just hit inspect and let me just drag this out to the max and let's just do like the typical phones here so let's do moto 4G, let me drag that down. Let me try to go to 75. And you can see here that they also fit on even smaller phone screens. And this is like the images on the narrow view. So you can see it like that. And then the animations are still going in. And then also you have it like that. And then I'll just go to like the super, let's see like iPhones. Typical stuff you guys see there. And then let's do the super tiny Galaxy Fold, which is 280 pixels. And then you can see it's still fits and looks clean here so you can see that everything's like that and then it's loading really quick and also i'm recording so it might be a little slow but it looks pretty quick right now so it should be fine and that's what we're going to build for today so if you want to see exactly how i did this then definitely watch this video all the way to the very end and now let's go hop into my vs code editor and let me show you how i created this all right, so here I am on my terminal. So go ahead and open up your terminal and then CD or navigate to the destination where you plan on creating your project. So I already have mine open on the projects folder. And if this is your first time creating a Gatsby website, you're going to have to actually install the Gatsby CLI. So let me navigate over to the actual website and show you what you need to do. And if you've already created a website before with Gatsby, then you already know the drill. But just in case, let me just show you really quick. And also Gatsby's docs is very helpful in case you have any issues with your project. They have a lot of information and it's very in depth. So right now, here I am on just gatsbyjs.com and on the quick start section. And pretty much what you need to do is just go here and do npm install dash g Gatsby CLI. So let me just go ahead and do it with you. I've already done it, but might as well show you for this video. So let me navigate back to my terminal. All right, so now here I am on my terminal. I'm just gonna command V or paste this in and just press enter. And then once this ends up finishing up loading, then we can go ahead and move on to the next step. All right, so now it is completed. So once you have yours installed, what you can do now is you can either head over to this Gatsby starter or default starter template that we're going to be using for this tutorial. And they actually have a lot of other templates on their website that you can utilize, such as blogs, 
and everything else from there. And they actually have like a specific section on their site where you can see all the different types of uh, templates they have. But this one comes with a lot of files that we need right off the bat. So I don't have to sit there and create them from the start. So I'm just on GitHub right now. I'm just called uh, github.com slash gatsbyjs dot or slash gatsby dash starter dash default. And pretty much what we need to do is simply copy this here. But the thing is, instead of me copying this, I'm just gonna copy this actual GitHub link right here. And I wanna name my product something different. But notice is they, the way you create a file, cause in React, you do like the typical MPX create React app. But for Gatsby, you just say Gatsby new, your project name, and then the template you plan on using. So this one will be the starter one. So let me navigate back to the terminal. All right, so here I'm in my terminal. I'm gonna type Gatsby new, and then let's just call this React and I'm put React dash Gatsby travel and let's put V1 here. And then after that, press space and then command B or paste in this link right here, which is the Gatsby starter default template. And then I'm gonna press enter. All right, so now it has completed. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and CD into this file. So whatever you name yours. So mine is React dash Gatsby dash travel dash v1 and now i navigated into it and then i'm going to go ahead and before i actually um, start this with gatsby develop i'm going to just do code and dot and this is something with vs code where it automatically opens it up and i have it already set up so if you do like a quick google search on how to set up the um, code dot on vs code there's plenty of information on how to do that and if you're using a different code editor then i'm not too sure what you do but for me, I'm just gonna press enter and it's gonna automatically open up VS Code for me. Now, if you don't have VS Code, I highly recommend you install it. But if you don't, then you just have to go ahead and navigate to your code editor and just open up the project in your own code editor. And now we have this over here. And now you can see that we actually have all these files. So let me just make this, let me make this little shrink right here for just one second. And let's just do, if you do, oh, let's see. Command J or also control back tick also works, opens up the terminal inside of VS Code. And then what we can do is actually go ahead and type in Gatsby develop. And then this is actually gonna be able to load up the page that we currently have. And this is gonna showcase the current template that we have installed. So once this finishes up, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like. All right, so the way you open up Gatsby links, so once you type in Gatsby develop, It'll showcase this localhost 8000 and then also this GraphQL. So if you ever done, never seen this before, don't worry. I'll go into that further down the line. But for now, all I need to do is press command on your keyboard. And you can see it shows the two, command plus click. And then you press click. And that pretty much opens up the default starter template. So now you can see this is the default template right here. You can go to like page two, back home page. And that's basically the startup template right here. So we don't really need everything on here, but there's a bunch of stuff that is pre-made already that saves a lot of time for making from scratch. So let me just shrink this down really quick. And let me just go ahead and let me close out the terminal here. And let's just go through the files right now. So the main thing that we're gonna mess with, we're gonna go through mainly the Gatsby config. So you can see here, this is all the stuff we have right now. And this is pretty much like the Think of this as the SEO of your site. So this is the title you can see here. So I want to update this to like, let's just say, let's just do Gatsby travel website. I just hit save. And normally when you update any Gatsby config files, you'd have to restart the server essentially control C and then run it again, which I'll show you in a minute. But for now, let me just show, and for the description, let's just change this to travel website show casing the best travel destinations and deals online. So I'm just making up some random description. Ideally, this would be something that would fit your website and what you think would make sense in terms of search engine optimization. I'll just save that here. And then let's do, let me open my terminal again. So let me right click actually and inspect this and see if this update. If not, we can restart this. 
So let me just drag this up here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and search up Command F and just search up description. And you can see here, the little meta tag actually showcases what we just updated. So travel website, showcasing the best travel destinations and deals online. So there's a bunch of additional things with SEO that you can add, such as keywords, Twitter handle, etc. But that's little, I'll say, not the focus right now, but that's something you can add eventually to your site. And then let's go ahead and let's go to the SRC. So right now we have the pages. Now the thing is with Gatsby versus just regular React is I can go ahead and actually create a page automatically. So if I hit new file here and just type in like um, random.js and then if I just like copy this index and just paste it in here. And again, you can watch right now just to show you. I can go up here and just type slash random. And you can see right now it's currently not showing. So what we need to do is actually do command J, open up the terminal, control C, close this, and then essentially stop it. And then we have to run Gatsby develop again. And then once we run that and it finishes, then I'll refresh the page and then it should work. So now you can see here that it showcases there. So if I say like this is the random page, save it. Now you can see that this random page actually works. And then if I go back to the home page, now it's back on the home page. So now you can see that it was that fast. And then we just created essentially another page literally just by creating a file and then just everything else you just add your content in there. So I'm actually gonna delete this. So right click, delete that and move the trash. And then here's some TypeScript. We're not gonna use that for this video. So we're just gonna delete this here. Also page two, let's just leave the pages for now. Also this is a 404 page. So this is essentially if, so this is like you go to a link that doesn't exist. So let me just type in like random letters. It's gonna essentially, if I click Right now, since we're in development mode, you're not gonna be able to see it, but if I click preview, custom page, this is ideally what it looks like once you deploy it. And that's just like an error page. So essentially just showcases, like you can't actually go there. And actually on the uh, the live side, let me, let me go here. Let me just type in random stuff here. This is a custom 404 page I made that I forgot to show you earlier. And then you can obviously customize this too, and then it returns home here. So that's just something, a little fancy stuff right there, but that's ideally what we're gonna be creating too. Then here's some images, and this just has like the icon, so the favorite icon up here, and then also this is just like the astronaut you saw there. And then here are the components. So one thing is with Gatsby is it has a layouts file right here. So essentially this consists of like the nav bar and everything. So let's actually go to layout.js. And we can get rid of this stuff right here. So this is GraphQL right here. And we're querying for some data. So I'm actually gonna hit delete on this. Let's get rid of line 10. Let's get rid of these comments up here. Let's get rid of these prop types. And let's see, get rid of the inside of the header. Get rid of that. This div right here, let's erase this. Let's erase this footer and then also the div underneath that. And then let's get rid of these prop types here. And also let's delete the layout.css because we're going to be using style components. So let me just save this. Let me fix this here. So this is what your layout should look like right now. Let me go back to the home. And this is what it currently looks like right here. And then let's just go delete the layout.css. And then here's an image, and this is utilizing, you can see here, Gatsby's image. We don't need this because we'd be end up creating our own queries. So let's just actually just delete this image.js file here. And then here's the header. So this is ideally the nav, or you can call it the nav bar. And let's see what happened here. It looks like the image deleted. So what we have to do is go to the index.js, delete line five to get rid of this image. And then let's just delete, let's just delete everything in here besides the, uh, let's just keep this H1 here. Save it here. And right now the link, we don't have a link yet, so we can delete that for now. And you can see this is what we currently got going on. So now let's actually 
go ahead and create our files. All right, so here, let me go to the components folder right here. And let me just go ahead and let's right click and do new folder. And let me just call this styles. And again, this is just one way to go about and organize your project. Again, there's a million ways you could go about and do this. So feel free to refactor the code afterwards and then organize it to your own liking. But this way, I feel like it's just an easier way to just see everything. So this, ideally, we're not going to put much in here besides just the global styles. So let's just go ahead and right click, hit new file. And let's just create a global styles js file and we're not going to edit this yet so we're going to leave that for now but just make it right there in the styles folder now we're still in the components so just make sure you guys have that there and let's go ahead and create the first component that we're actually going to end up editing so aside from the header we're obviously going to have the hero section so let me actually go ahead and create a new file let me just call this hero.js you can call this whatever you want to and also make sure when we go on to the left side here, if you click on extensions, type in ES7, go here and this is what you want to have. And essentially this allows you to create essentially React components much quicker. And once you download this one right there, you should be good to get started. So let's go ahead and let's start with the header component first, and then we'll create the hero after. And so let's go ahead and I'm going to navigate to the header.js and I'm just going to change the name to a capital H just so I keep them all my components with a capital letter. So header.js and then what I'm going to do is actually let's go ahead and delete line two for the prop types. Let's get rid of pretty much everything inside of here. Let me get rid of the site title here and then let's get rid of these prop types here. So this is currently what the header looks like. So now what we need to do is actually start creating what's inside. So essentially this is the nav. So I'm going to be using stock components to create the uh, styling for this. So let me actually go and looks like, let me just save this really quick. Looks like the layout, I'm gonna save that one. So let me save it here. And that's fine, let's just put, now let's go back to header, let's just put like a filler. And I'm gonna say, let's actually change these parentheses. I wanna make them curly braces. And then just do return parentheses and let's just put like H1 header. For now, and see if I refresh it. Okay, it's back here. And that's one thing too, sometimes, depending on when you're watching this, is Gatsby like delays the update so it's sometimes you might have to refresh the page and then also I'm going to show you another thing called Gatsby clean that just ensure that everything is set to go in case you have some crazy air that makes no sense that's something you want to try too in case you're uh, confused on why your code looks perfect but it's still not working that's one thing you can do which I'll show you later but for now let's actually go ahead and I'm going to do command J and let's do control C so you start a server and I'm going to start stock components. So one little thing I forgot to add when it comes to installing stock components, which I'll show later again in the video in the future of this, but I'm just going back in the beginning and instead of just doing yarn add stock components, we actually have to do go to Gatsby and you can go ahead and just copy this line right here. So you can just Google Gatsby plugin stock components. And just copy that in there if you have yarn you can just copy up to the npm install word and then you can just say yarn add and then paste this in and then go ahead and press enter and install all of these so that when you do go to your package.json then you'll have the babel and you also have stock components here so that's just one quick um thing you have to do before you proceed originally i had just stock components and we ran into some errors so i wanted to go back and insert this little clip just so that you don't have any issues in case you're following along from the beginning. And then go to your gatsby.config or dash config file and just copy this right here, Gatsby style or plugin style components. And then under um, plugin, just go ahead and paste that line right here. And that's exactly where I added here. So this is some stuff we did in the future I added on, but just wanted to make sure everyone's on the same page. So make sure that you have this added to your config and you have this these installed 
so that you won't have to run into any errors when it comes to actually styling. But I also have that in the future of this video, which you'll see when we run into some errors, but we fixed it. So now that ends it off here. So I'll see you back in the video. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the top here and under import react, I'm gonna say import styled from styled components. And I'm actually gonna create all the styles within just this file instead of creating a separate and header elements.js file and putting all the uh, stock components in there and exporting it. This is much easier. It makes it much easier, I say, to keep up with. But ideally, you could separate your styles in a different file, but that's all preference to you. And now let's go ahead and first thing is, if you don't use stock components, it's not too difficult to understand. Think of it as like a combination with SAS and also combined JavaScript as well. We can pass in properties. And I'll just show you all that fancy stuff too in case you've never used it before. But pretty much what we're going to do is let's erase this. Let's do parentheses. And let's create a tag called nav. So that's just going to be the essentially the outside tag. So essentially like the container containing everything in there. And then inside the nav, I'm going to have a link. So essentially this will be the logo or the, ideally you'd put this, your logo image. But since I don't have a logo, I'm just going to use text. And I'm going to call it called nav link. And this is going to be a link. So with uh, Gatsby, if you notice, it's already here, import link from Gatsby. Ideally, if you just use regular React, it would say import link from React Writer DOM. But Gatsby already has that all built in with it. So you just have to say import link from Gatsby and you don't have to install anything extra and it works perfectly fine. So you can just say like two equals to slash and then close it. And then here you can just type in your website name. I'd call this Explorex for the filler. And let's actually go ahead and stop this so you can see what's going on. So let's say const, I'm gonna say const nav. Let me close up my terminal. Let's say equal to style.nav with the backticks. And this is essentially how you start everything. And then if I go inside the backticks, this is where I can start creating the actual style. So if I wanna say here, background, then we're just going to pretty much make this transparent for right now. Later on, we'll create a function and essentially update this. But for now, let's make it simple. And then let's set the height. I want it to be 80 pixels. And this is a cool little trick I found out on how to show you what's happening in real time. Because before, it was very difficult to show this. But now, if I do like const nav link equal to styled. And the thing is for... Uh, links like normally you'd say like dots the, the html tag you use like a div or like h3 or p tag etc but for like a link for instance or like a component you'd say parentheses and then link and then that's how you actually style that and then you do the back text there now i'm gonna wait off and install this after but i want to just save this now just so you can see the actual um styles happening and now let me just make sure if I do like a um, refresh here. Yeah, so we're not connected. So I have to do command J, go in your terminal and let's do Gatsby develop again. So I wish they had it where you could just, you know, auto refresh and just hot reloads like all the time. But at least right now, this time it doesn't. So maybe in the future we'll see that. But for now, we're gonna have to do a lot of closing and restarting this. So let's do command R save this here now you can see we have a little nav bar here so let's actually uh let's make this red for now because um the video the hero section is not going to be till after we add that so you won't even be able to see what we're making so now let's go ahead and let me just put in the display flex and this is going to pretty much uh, make the nav bar the way it looks. But since we don't have the actual nav bar items, then you're probably not going to be able to see this happening. But ideally, this is just typical CSS where we say just by content, space between. And then this is a padding, I'm going to say 0 0.5 rem. And the default rem is essentially 16 pixels. So that's half. And then I'm going to say calculating. Parentheses and then parentheses again. I'm gonna say 100 viewport width minus 1300 pixels and then divide that by two 
and then we'll have the Z index. Let me just put some bigger numbers, so like 100. And then position is going to be relative. So now we're pretty much set with the, uh, the navbar section. And you can't really see what's happening yet. But let's start this nav link right now. So for here, let's just say color. Let's just make this white. Let me save it. You can see. And then let's just say display flex. Align items. I want to make sure everything is centered. Text decoration. Since it, these are links, you just have the underlines. So let's do text decoration. Oh, I have a decoration to be none. Padding to be zero one rem. Height. Let's just set it to one hundred percent. And cursor is just pointer. So this is just right here. So what we're actually gonna need to do is create a data file to showcase the uh, the nav link. But before we do that, let's actually import something here. So let's do a on the mobile menu the bars. So this is this is just a React icon. So just bars, and let's just close this out here. And if you never used React icon before or React icon, let's just say that it's pretty much, let me just bring it up really quick. So here's React icons and pretty much you can search up anything. So I put like um, bar, you can see right here, we got like FA bars here, et cetera, whatever you want to use. But pretty much uh, I just called these bars. You can, you don't have to call them that. But ideally what I'm going to do is actually say here, F8 bars. And what you need to do is you have to say, and actually let me make sure my import react at the top. But now let's do import. And the way you import is you say curly brace, and then you paste that in, the FA bars from quotes, react dash icons, and then you pick the, the first two letters of the icon, FA, and that's how you do it there. And then we can go down to the bottom and say cons, I just call this bars is equal to styled. And the icon we passed in was called FA bars. So that's why I put here in the parentheses. And then for the back ticks, we're pretty much gonna say display to be none on a desktop. And let's just put the color, make sure it's white. But then on mobile responsive, I wanna make sure that this actually shows, let's say at media screen and max width of 768 pixels. And let's do display to be block. Let's do position is absolute. And let me actually, let me wait because uh, we haven't even installed this yet. So if I were to save this, it's gonna run an error. And it's gonna say you can't find React icons. So let's actually do command J terminal. Let's open that back up. Let me control C, close the server. And let's just do, I'm gonna say yarn add. If you don't have yarn, again, do npm install. And then just say react dash icons. And then press enter. And then let's do Gatsby develop again. And then here I'm just gonna simply refresh. And now you can see a little icon action right here. So let's actually let me close this really quick. And now let me show you positioning here. So let's just do top. And since we're in mobile view essentially now, it's gonna display. But let's set, set the top to zero, set the right to zero. And I save that here, you can see switched over. Then let's do transform translate and I'm set to semicolon here let's do minus 100 percent comma 75 percent save it here so now I get shifted there and then let's set the font size to 1.8 rem and then cursor pointer this is essentially the positioning right here now right now the styles look weird because we haven't actually added our global styles so remember in the beginning, we created this global styles file here. So go navigate over there. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and just type in imports create with the curly brace, create global style from style dash components. And then under here, I'm going to say export const global style equal to create global style and then two back ticks. And then I'm gonna do a little shift eight, the little asterisk mark here, and then curly brace down. And let's set the font family. And I'm gonna use Roboto. So I'm gonna actually add that in eventually, but for now it's just gonna default. 
since we don't have it imported. And then let's set the margin to zero, the padding to zero, and the box sizing to border box. So let me save that there. And you're probably wondering what happened, why didn't it work? So now what we actually need to do is we need to go to our layout and let's actually add this here. So let me just put this on the top here and let's just say global style. And notice that it auto imported for me at the top already. You could also press control space and then press enter as well. And that should import too. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if it doesn't work for you, just simply just type it in and import at the top. And then I'll just closing the sub closing tag. And now you can see that the margins are around it and everything looks nice and snug. So now if I go back to a sex off here, let me actually, yeah, let me just X out this. And let me just keep the header.js. Now you see when I increase the desktop, it disappears and mobile is back. So now what we need to do is actually create a data file because you can't even see the actual menu items. So now let's actually go ahead. And this is just one way I did it. There's multiple ways you can go about doing this, but let me just show you different ways you can go about and test it out. So now I'm actually gonna have this, and this is inside, or I say this is outside the components. I just put this on that root directory. You can name, put this in the components, it doesn't really matter. But let me just do SRC, new folder. Let me just call this data. And then here, let me just say new file here. And then let me just call this one, let's see, let's just say, yeah, let me new file here. Let's just call this, let's just say menu data.js. And pretty much we're just gonna pass in our menu item. So I'm gonna say export, I'm gonna export this, cons, and then I'm gonna call it menu data, equal to an array. And then we'll pass in a curly brace, and then the title, so you can call it whatever you want to, but ideally this is the name of the page. So this one's gonna be the about page for me. And then after that, I'm gonna call the link. So I named this link. And then it's gonna be quote slash. And the link I want it to be is the about slash link. And then I do a comma here. And if you do shift, alt, down arrow, then this copies it down for you. If it doesn't work, just simply highlight and copy it for you. And then let's just change these additional ones here. So let me just call this trips, change this one to trips here. And then we have careers. We'll change this one to careers. And then also here, let's just do contact. And go here and let's do contact here. Now I'm gonna save this now. And now let's navigate back to our header.js. Let's scroll to the top. And the thing is now what we need to do, and let me actually do command B so that you can see more and it closes on my side. But now what we need to do is actually import this. So I'm gonna say import curly brace and whatever you called your data. So we named this menu data with a lowercase m, so menu data. And this is gonna be importing from close dot dot slash. Now you can see the data folder pops up and then slash again, and we have the menu data. So now let's go ahead and map through this so that we can display this. So first before, after the bars, we're gonna create another cycle point called nav menu. Close that out. And then in order to display this data, we actually have to map through this. So I'm gonna say curly brace here. And then the name of the data file, which we call it up here is menu data. So we say menu data. Then you do dot map, and then I'm gonna say parentheses, and then we're gonna pass an arrow function in here. So I'm gonna say parentheses again, go outside of this first parentheses, press space, equal arrow function, curly braces, and now we have a little arrow function. And actually, let's, let me let me change these to parentheses so I just don't have to put in return. So I have the change your first uh, curly brace to parentheses, and then the first one right here to parentheses here. So now we have it like this. And now I'm just gonna pass in my other sub component, which I'm calling nav link. I'm gonna say nav link. And then here's where we can actually pass in the data dynamically so that we don't have to sit there and manually add like five links here. So I'm gonna say nav links two. 
So essentially the two path. I'm gonna say equal to when you pass in curly braces. And the thing is, we have to pass in props here. So I'm gonna say item. You can call this, you know, whatever you want to, but I'm just calling this one item. And then I pass in an index just so I can add that as a key because the React gets mad if you don't have a key inside. But pretty much here we say item, which is the first parameter we have here, dot, and then whatever we call the, uh, the data. So we call it a link. So this is essentially the path, like two slash here. This is the same exact thing, except we call it link. So it'll be two item dot link would go to whatever link we put. And then I'm gonna just pass in a key, curly brace called index, because as we passed in there. And then let me just close this out. And then inside this nav link, we wanna showcase the actual title, the uh, name about us, the trips page, contact page, etc. So we're gonna say curly brace item dot title. Now, when I say this is going to run into an error because these aren't defined, so let me actually go ahead and go down here. Let's say const nav menu equal to styled dot. Let's do div back to back take. Let me save this here. And I can kind of see it here, but let me just see. Actually, let me make this desktop. Yeah, you can't really see anything besides the about. So now let's just style this nav menu really quick. And then once we do, you can see all of the Maybe you might just create it. So let's just say display flex align dash item center margin dash right. And let's just do, I'm gonna do minus 40 pixels because it was like off the centering based off my design. Again, this is not, you don't have to have that. And then let's just do at media screen and max width. Cause ideally I don't want it to show on the mobile responsive. So let's do 768 pixels. And let's just say display to be none. So I'll save that there. So right now it disappears, but when we shoot this over, now you can see that the actual nav menu is here. And this is exactly what we had created when we made this uh, data file. So we had about trips, careers, contact. And if I click on them, you can see in the URL that it updates based off of whatever you put for the link in your data. So now you can see that's working fine. So that's perfect. And then now what I want to do is actually create a button. So let's just go here. So underneath this curly brace, we have nav menu. And then underneath that, let's enter here. I'm going to call this nav btn. And then here I'm going to pass in. And let's just do, uh, yeah, I'm going to create a custom button in just a second. But let me just pass this, um, just say hey for now. And let's go down here and let me just say const nav btn equal to styled dot div with the back ticks and let's pass in our file here let me pass this in and then i'm just gonna say display flex align items let's just say center let's do margin dash rights of 24 pixels and at media screen and max width for more responsive 768 pixels. I'm going to pass in the curly brace here. Let's just say display to be none. So right now it's not showing, but we shrink this over. You can see that it has hey. So ideally on the uh, the button would showcase here. So let me actually add that in. So let me shrink that again, and then let's do command B. And what I want to do is actually create another component. So we're on components folder, click new file, and let's call this button.js. So this is essentially going to be a reusable button so that we don't have to sit there and like type in button every single time. But you can just pass it in and then add additional uh, properties to it. So here I'm just going to say import styled from stock components, then import link from Gatsby. So I'm calling this a button, but it's essentially going to be a link. But there's a cool little thing you can do with stock components where you say as equals uh, in quotes, and then you can change it to something else if you don't want to use it as that. But then I'm just calling this button because ideally this is only linking internally for my designs. I'm going to say export cons button equal to style parentheses link comes in Gatsby. We have the double back ticks. I'm going to say background. 
And essentially, this is a cooler way if you've never seen this, but uh, pretty much you say dollar sign curly brace, parenthesis curly brace. So now you can pass, and I'm destructuring this too, by the way, but I delete this to be like props that primary, but here I can just destructure and say primary. And then outside the curly brace, outside the second parenthesis, we'll pass the arrow function, parenthesis again, then you type in primary. So again, you can name this, you know, tacos, and it doesn't matter what you name this. This is just pretty much a way to tell you what you can add as, as properties on the button to change the design of it. So if mine is called primary because this is the color of the background. And we use ternary operator, so question mark here. So essentially if this has a property primary and it's true, then I'm gonna pass in, I want the color to be F26 A2E. And then I'm gonna do the colon and then quotes again. Let me do, maybe you can close it out. And if it's not true, then I just want it to be hashtag 077BF1. And then semicolon here. And then let's go ahead and let's add the white space. No wrap. And then let's set a padding. And let me just do again dollar sign curly brace, parenthesis curly brace. And then I'm gonna call this one big. So outside the curly brace parenthesis, arrow function, I'm gonna say parenthesis big. If big is true, I want to set the padding to 16 pixels by 40 pixels. So since it's the size of the button, else I want to set this equal to 10 pixels by 32 pixels. And then let's do color, hashtag FFF. Let's do font size equal to, and let's actually copy this, this padding's big section because I'm going to use the same thing here. Because ideally if I have big uh, button, I want the font size to match too. And then let's just set the font size to 20 pixels else is going to be 16 pixels. And then here, let's do outline to be none. Let's do border to be none. And then let's do min dash width, just to make sure it's at least 100 pixels. And let's see, let's do cursor pointer, text decoration none. And I have a hover effect, so let's just say transition. Let's do 0.3s and I'm gonna be using animations too. So I just wanna ensure that this has the actual uh, transition. So I'm gonna say important. Now, ideally you wouldn't need to add this if you just had like typical buttons, but the animations were overriding this. So I had to use this for that. And then let's do border radius. And let's do, again, dollar sign, curly brace, parenthesis, curly brace. I'm gonna call this round. So essentially it's gonna be rounded if it's not. And then arrow function, parentheses, round. If round is true, set it to uh, 50 pixels, else set it to just none. So it's gonna be just typical um, like pointed buttons. And this is a way to add the hover. So essentially nest it in here. So the way you add a hover is you just do and colon hover. I just spell it right. Could brace, and then let's just do, let's just copy this line background color, paste it here, and let's pretty much, let's just replace these. So let's actually command X this out, erase this colon. So make sure the first color here is the 077, then I'm gonna say colon again, paste that one in there. So essentially just vice versa replaces it. And then let's do transform, translate Y, and let's just do uh, minus two pixels. This just makes like a little, rises up a little bit. Now command B. Now let's go back to the header and let's go to right here in the nav BTN. I'm gonna erase this. And then now we can actually just import this button into our component. So I'm just gonna say button, press enter here. So now you can see imported button from button. And then let's close it out. Let's just say, uh, what did I put here? Let's say book a flight. So save this now, close it out. And now you can see that the button looks like this, but our button on the original website looks like this. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pass in those properties. So let me see if I can do it like this. Maybe you can see it better. Yeah, this one. 
Yeah, so I'm gonna say what we call so we had primary. I'm gonna set that equal to true. Also I went round equals to true. And then since this is a link, then I'm gonna set the two value equal to just a slash trips for now. And pretty much I hit save. And notice how the button completely changes. So you can see now it is orange and it has a little blue raised a little up too. So this pretty much is how we created the nav bar. Now I just need to add some states and additional things, but let's actually go ahead and worry about that later. Let me actually go and start creating the hero section now. So the video, and then you guys can see how we added all that stuff. So let's hop into VS code and create a new file. So let's go ahead and we actually had that created my bad. So if you don't have that, make sure you have here.js and let's start adding an R code. All right, so let's start creating the hero section. So the first thing we're going to do is use the shortcut, the extension that we installed earlier, which allows us to create essentially a React template fairly quickly just by typing R-A-F-C-E. And then you press tab and you can see here it imports React from React creates a arrow function and then we can just add in content in the div so here we can just be like hero and let's save this actually let's do um let's do an h1 so that doesn't erase the uh little parentheses and now if we go to pages go to our index.js and then for just replace this high people with hero and then see before you uh, close it, just press enter to auto complete or essentially auto import it. And then slash, and then we save. So now you can see it is imported. So now if we go to hero.js and add stuff to it, it automatically updates live right there in front of us. So now let's actually go ahead and let's start adding the content. So first thing is I'm going to get rid of these divs. And then within the return, I'm going to add a style component called this one hero container. Again, this is just what I decided to name my style components. You can name this to whatever you like. And next we're gonna do, I'll just call this the hero BG for background. So I'm gonna say hero BG. And then within this hero BG is essentially going to be the video. So I'm going to call this video BG. You can just call it video. I mean, I, in terms of tutorial sake, I guess this makes more sense for me, but let's put uh, SRC equal to empty coach for now. And then simply let's put the type equal to video slash MP4. And then we're going to close this out. And we're gonna add all of the other properties in just a second, but let me just start styling this first so we can see what happens. So now let's import styled from stock components. So import style from stock components. And then what I'm gonna do is going to the bottom, we're gonna simply just add our styles here. So I'm gonna say const hero container equal to style.div backtick backtick. Now, before I add the styles, I'm gonna do uh, copy it down real quick. So shift all down arrow. And let me just add this just so that I can show you the styles live without it giving me the error. So then hero BG, and then let's do hero. Not here, my bad, hero. It should be video BG. And then this one's going to basically be a video. So let's go and erase this div, call this a video. And let me put some spacing in between and then let's just hit save. So now it is invisible, nothing's there. So first I wanna do is let's add in the hero container style. So let's go ahead and I wanna have a default background color just in case nothing shows up. So I'm gonna say zero C, zero C, zero C. Save that there. And then let's do display to be flex. And the reason I'm doing these the uh, display flex and everything so that the content inside of it is actually nice and centered. So then we can do justify content. Let's do center here. And actually, let me see if I can, uh, I think it's better if I wait and put the actual content first 
and then we can do all that stuff. So let's do uh, outside the hero BG. I'm gonna go under and I just call this hero content. So essentially the text you see. So let's just call this hero content. And then I'm gonna call these hero items. So let's say hero items. And then here's gonna be my H1. So I'm gonna say hero H1. And then inside this H1, I'm just gonna say Unreal Desti Destinations. And then under the H1, we're gonna say Hero, just be, just for like show for a paragraph tag, and just say out of this world. So that's pretty much that part. So then after the P tag, we just want a button. So we have the button we created earlier in the styles folder. I'm not sure stop them, my bad. We're under the styles folder here. So we can just import that. So we can just say button, press enter. And I'm not sure if it actually imported it. So we do control space again, press enter, and now it looks like it works. And then let's close this out. I bet it should be the not self-closing, just normal closing. And then here I just add travel now. And also I'll add that in a second, the uh, styles to this, but let's just add these to the bottom real quick just so that we can actually import this because if I were to save this right now, it's going to be like, what are these? So here, let me just do uh, salt, alt shift down here again. So I got one, two, three, four. And then let's just do, let's see what we got. Hero content. This will be a div. And then under here, we'll have hero items. And then this is going to be a div. Not div video. <laughs> so div right there. And then we got hero h1. Hero h1. And this is just h1. And then we'll have hero p tag. So now if I save this now, it should work. And let's see if you can see, can't see the text cause it's dark. So let's actually add a color to the top really quick just so you can see this. So let's just be like color here. All right, perfect. So now you can see that. So now let's start adding the style. So let's do a line items to be center. And let's set the height to 100 viewport height just so you can see like what's going on. All right, there we go. And then let's do padding. Let's do zero, one rem. And then let's do, make sure it's position relative because we're gonna add this little uh, overlay effect to it using position absolute. And we need this in order for that to work. And then let's do margin dash top to be minus 80 pixels. Now this is a little, um, little trick I did so that whenever the, uh, the background transparent for the header, this is just one way to do it. There's alternative ways where if you just imported the header like into this hero uh, component, but since we're using Gatsby with layouts, I wanted to keep my header and eventually we're gonna add a footer below this on every single page so that you don't have uh, uh, so that doesn't add confusion or any issues and then let's go back to hero scroll this out really quick see how it looks so this is currently what it looks like so now we can actually go to the header.js and let's remove this background and make it transparent so now you can see that it's nice and snug. And I use minus 80 pixels because the website is, or the, the header height is 80 pixels. So if you have a smaller uh, header nav bar, you'd obviously only do negative margin to the size of the actual nav bar you created. And then let's add, I'm gonna add this overlay after we add the video, cause you're not gonna be able to see it. But for the hero, yeah, let's actually go ahead and uh, Let's add the video. So I have my files saved up, but let me show you the site I got these videos from. So here's one site called Pexels Videos. And now you can see that here, if you scroll down, there's a bunch of different videos. But what I'm gonna go ahead and do is type in travel, press enter. 
and then you can just go here and pick whatever video that you like and I already have my videos downloaded so I'm just gonna drag those over but like just looking through here you can see the scroll down and like this one looks pretty cool this one actually I'll probably use this one too if I didn't have my previous one and I can just hit here play and you can see it's a little drone footage and it's nice and slow and this one looks pretty cool too and then what you do is just go over here to download and I just did full HD because if you use the original it's like a massive file and depending on your computer this would make your website super slow so you can just go with full HD and that should be fine you can even try HD but just depending on screen size it might be the story or whatnot and then you just go here and click on free download and then pretty much you have your downloaded file and then once it finishes then you literally just have to drag this file into your actual uh, project so now let me actually let me drag in the files that I've already have for this project just to save some time. So let me just go back here and then let me, here you just go here and then if you don't have a Mac, you just open this. Or well, I'd usually do show and finder. I don't know what the Windows version would say, but this pretty much shows you the file in your folder and then you can just drag it over. So let me drag mine over really quick. So actually before I do drag that over, let me create an assets folder. So I'll just go here over SRC and click new folder. And actually, it looks like I'm inside the components. Let me make sure I'm outside of that. And then I'm on the SRC new folder here. And let me just type in assets. And then pretty much, I'm gonna do a new folder again. Let's create a videos. And then now we can go ahead and drag in the file. So here I have this video, which you saw in the original design. And right now you can't really preview it, but what you can do now is when you go up to the top and you just go here, you can import this video. And this is a different way of importing it versus hard coding the actual path. So if I just say like import, and then this is what you would name the actual title of what you want to call this. So I'm just gonna straight up say video, and then I'm gonna say it's from, and then we're gonna go into our assets folder, so dot dot slash. Then we have assets, actually right mistyped assets right there and then slash again and then it's going to be videos and then slash again and then the video i called mine travel to mp4 when you drag yours in it's going to be like a bunch of random letters so just rename it just right click rename to whatever you want to and then for the src instead of having quotes we'll pass in curly braces and then we'll just pass in the name that we call this which is video right here and then i'll hit save and then right now you can see we have this video background. So again, feel free to uh, figure out whichever one you want. And right now you notice that it's like a picture, like nothing's happening. So what we need to do is add some properties here. So to the video tag, let's do auto play. Let's loop it. Let's make sure it's muted. And then also let's add plays in line just so that uh, this works with iPhones on mobile. And then let's save this here. So make sure I click yeah here. And then let me actually add, yeah, save this again, just make sure. And now you can see that we have the video auto playing in the background. So that's pretty nice right there. And then we can go ahead and let me actually drag in the one I just showed you too, just to show you the difference. So like here, this was the one that I showed you here. And I drag that there, and then let's just call this one Travel 2. So now I can just go and just show you how you can like switch this out. If I add Travel 2, save it. And you can see we got that drone video we have here. So now you obviously, depending on your preference, which one you like, I think this one looks pretty cool. It just all depends. But I just had this one for the original one, so we'll just keep that for mine. Obviously do whatever you like. But now what I wanna do is style this because you notice that the actual content, it's gone, like you can't see it. So what we need to do is add some content stuff to this actual hero BG. So first thing, go here to hero BG and then let's make sure, let's add a position absolute. And then let's do top zero, bottom zero, right zero and then left zero 
And then I wanna make sure the width is 100%. Height is 100%. I don't know why it keeps auto. And then let's do overflow hidden. Save that here. Now nothing has changed yet, but now for the video BG, let's go here and let's just type in width to be 100%. Let's set the height to be 100% here. Let's do O dash object dash fit colon cover then let's do object dash fit cover and then for the hero content because right now you can't see it let's do z index let's just set it to three and then let's set the height to be calculating of 100 viewport height minus 80 pixels then let's set the max height all right my bad max height, 100%, and then let's set the padding of zero wrap top bottom, then left right calculating 100 viewport width, minus 1300 pixels, divided by two. Let's save this here. So now you can see that the content is within. So now the N is over because of the Z index, since we had position Positioning on here, it was essentially hover or covered. So now we have it above everything. And now we can do display. Let's do flex here. Flex direction. Let's do column. Let's do justify content center. Align items center. Text align center. Let's set the height to 100, report height. Then max height, let's set that to 100%. And let's see, padding zero. Let's set the color, hashtag FFF. Let's set the line height, 1.1. Font weight, let's just make it bold for now. And last but not least, color is essentially you can keep it white, but since we have it on the actual container, it's fine. But if you were to change it from a different color, because the default is usually white, you can go and add that there. But let me just keep it like this. Should be fine for now. So you can see everything centered here. So now what I'm gonna do is just finish up this styling here. So let's do a uh, font size, and then I'm gonna use this function called clamp, which essentially it makes the fonts more responsive without having to add media query. So essentially the first value 1.5 rem is the smallest value you want the font to be. The next is the viewport width. So you can raise this up from like two to whatever infinity. And this just makes it bigger depending on how high you raise this. And then the max uh, size you want is for that property, which I put for rem. And you can see right now the uh, the font's smaller because the viewport, it's a shrink screen. So you can see how like it just resizes the Unreal Destinations text, which is H1. That's all because of font clamp. Next, we got margin dash bottom 1.5 rem. Save that there. And then let's do letter spacing three pixels. Just make a little difference. Let's do font weights. Let's do bold and see how that looks for now. And it looks like since I already have a, um, actually I haven't even um, imported the the font. So, and technically it's H1, so we should be fine with that. We'll leave that out for now. Let's do padding 0, 1 rem here. And you can't see it yet, but when you have like a smaller screen, it won't touch it, which since I have the padding. And then here, let's just copy this font clamp, or font size clamp. And let's change this to one rem. Let's change this to three rem. And let's change this to three viewport width. Let's do margin dash bottom two rem. And then we should be fine there. So now you can see, shrink it out here like this. And now let's add some properties to the button so that we can actually see it. So right now we go back to button 
and let's do primary equals to true. Let's do big equals to true. Let's do round equal to true. And then let me set the two value equal to slash trips. Now you can see we got a button here and I click it, it goes to the trips URL. And then if you notice on the original, the actual background is darker. And I just did that so that it's easier to read the text because with these type of video backgrounds, if it's like not dark, it's really difficult to see the text. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna add a little overlay to that. So here, let me just go to hero container and then we can do is colon before. And essentially let's set the content to empty. Let's position this. So position at, actually hold on. Position absolute. And we actually copied this um, right here technically. So let's just go here. And actually should be semicolon. And then let's do Z index of two. And then let's set the background to be a linear gradient. Let's do 180 degrees comma RGBA of zero comma zero comma zero comma 0 0.2. And then outside of this, we're gonna say percent or 0%. Let me say comma here. And let me fix this, make sure it's back round. And then we can just copy this again. So let's just copy this. And then paste it after it. And then let's just set this to 100%. And then I want this to be 0 0.6. And then now we're at this last parenthesis. I'm gonna do a comma. And then pretty much, let's just copy this again. So let's just say linear gradient, copy this line one more time, paste it here. And then let's change, let's see. Let's make this second part transparent 100%. So now we save that. Now you can see we have this background overlay. So in case you didn't see, just pause the screen really quick and then you can just see the exact code here. So line by line, 180 comma, RGBA comma, this line, parentheses comma, and then this again. And now you can see we have this nice little overlay on the video background and looks basically the exact same. The only difference is for this P tag, if you set it here, let's just add a, uh, font weight of 400. So now it's like a little thinner. And now you can see, this is what we currently have right now. And then here, you can see these navigates, two different pages. So now let's actually go ahead and let's create the next section. So the actual, uh, right here, this little product card section. So let's create that. So now let me go and let's do command B. And let me show you this little trick on VS Code. If you click on Open Editors, you can just click this X. It closes out everything for you. So that's pretty sweet for that. And now let's just create this next section. So I just called this Trips. Again, you can call it whatever you want to, but let's go to Components. And let's click on New File. And let's just type in trips.js. All right, so now let's start adding the code for the trip section. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the RAFCE shortcut, press tab here. And then let's just go and let's do H1, say trips, save that here. And then let me go and go to index.js. Let's just pass trips in here and let's save it. And let's make sure that it's working. So let's refresh the page and looks like, let's see, Command J, let me close or control C to stop the server and then run Gatsby develop again. And then once it loads up, we'll see if everything's working. I'm gonna have to add a uh, style to this just so you can see. So let's see. Fresh it again. All right, perfect, now we got it working. So in case yours doesn't uh, show, try that also quick. Tip two, let's do control C again. Sometimes even after you restart it, it still doesn't work or show what you want. 
So you can run Gatsby clean and then just press enter. And this essentially ensures that everything is refreshed and then you can do Gatsby develop again. And then it should do the exact same thing where we start. So that's just a tip in case you're following along and it's still not showing like updates. But this is like the first part of this website so we should be fine. But in case you do see errors, that is something you can try out. And then if I refresh it too, just to make sure we are perfect. Okay, so now let's go back to trips.js and let's just pretty much, we can't really do much yet because we have to actually create the uh, the data file. But for now, let's just return a, let's make a products container. So let's do products container. I misspelled that, hold on, container. And then in here, let's do products heading. And then inside of there, let's do product wrapper. And then let's just put like um, wrapper here. And my bad, hold on, me command Z. This should be on a separate line. So this should be heading. And then under this should be products or product wrapper. And I mean, you can name products so the same thing and then just put wrapper here. And then let's import styled from stock components. And then let's create it down here. So cons products container equal to style.div with the back ticks. And then let's hold shift alt down twice. Let's change this to products heading. And then product wrapper here. So now let me add some styles. So let's do inside the container. Let's make the minimum height, 100 viewport height. Let's set the padding to be five RAM top and bottom and then just calculating 100 viewport width minus 1300 pixels divided by two. Let's do background to be hashtag FFF and then color hashtag FFF. So right now you can't see anything because the color is white and the background is white. But now you can see that at least we have something here. And then let's actually, yeah, let's make this red just so you can see like what's happening. And then the product's heading, we can just sit here and let's just say font size, clamp 1.2 rem, five viewport width, three rem. Then let's do text align to be center, margin bottom to be five rem, and then color hashtag zero zero. Now we're gonna leave product wrapper because uh, we need to actually get create a function that maps through our data file and then essentially displays the cards. Cause this isn't, I didn't hard code each one individually, I mapped through my data and it just displays four images which I've set there. So what I'm gonna do now, and I'll just, see so you have this data file here. So to my knowledge, at least when I'm filming this, that you need to create a JSON to a .json file for the GraphQL to read it. If anyone knows alternatives with normal JS to utilize Gatsby image, definitely let me know. But so far this works for me, so I just utilize this. So in my data folder, right click and just call this, let's just say trips.json for now. And this is different from like a typical JS cause you don't do um, certain things. So what we can just do right away is we can just go like this and do an array. And then in here we can just pass in our object with our file or data. So for instance here, I'm just gonna call this IMG for image colon and then Here's where you would actually add in the images. So we're actually gonna add the links to the images now, and then we'll import this eventually later. But we can just do dot dot slash, and it's gonna be inside the assets folder. And then we can do slash here, images slash travel dash one dot JPG. So this is what I called. So let's actually, let me fill out this first object, and then I'll show you the place I got the images. So let's go here. Let's do alt, and this is for the like the alt and the image. So this one is just tan, tan Buddha, 
And if I mispronounce that, definitely let me know. I'm not too sure of the exact pronunciations, but and then for name, this is just the uh, like right here, this actual thing you see that that uh, name right there. So that's what I'm typing here. You can name this title heading; it doesn't matter. And I just call it a name, and it's just the same exact thing as the alt. And then for the button, which is the the button on there. I just want the label to be, just call it view destination. All right, so now I can add a comma here and I can just copy and paste this. So it's command C under paste one, two, three times. And then I command just close my terminal. So now we can pretty much uh, add, edit these. So let's actually, let me show you, let me save this really quick. And then let me show you where I got this image. So here I just went to pexels.com. So this is the same site with the videos, except this one actually has images without videos. So you don't go to the actual video link. So here you can just type in like travel here and they can switch the orientation to vertical depending on which style you want. And then you can go in and just straight up like take any of these photos. So like I spent a long time going through this and finding specific photos for my example. But like, if you wanna go here, you can click this free download. And then I just pick the smallest one for here, maybe medium, depending on how big your screens are and just download that. And then you just drag in there. So you can go ahead and download four different images or you can just use one random image for now just to use as like a filler and then go later on and spend some time looking through these images there's also alternative websites like Unsplashed and like this one, this one actually is pretty cool here. And you can sit here and just go through, pick whichever images you want to, and then go ahead and drag those to your folder. So like this one over here looks pretty cool with the Eiffel Tower. And you get the point here and you can also check out like, um, like you can type in like famous uh, places people travel like Bali. And if I go here, you can see there's a lot of good pictures here. So like this one looks pretty nice. And I had a bunch of different images, but I just want to keep it simple for this tutorial. So I just picked whatever, but again, have fun with that. And then you can get any four images. It really doesn't matter which ones you use. As long as you get four or three, two, whatever, or you could just do like me where, um, you can just copy the same image four times in case you can't find any. And then what you need to do is drag that into your, uh, project. So let me go ahead and find my images. So let me bring the assets folder down. And then we gotta actually create a folder for images. And then I'm gonna drag in all of my different images here. Now I have multiple images here, so let's just do, uh, drag these over here. And let's see, looks like, let me try that one more time because it didn't work. So now you can see these are the images here. One, two, three, and Four. So this is the fourth image here. And again, these are just general travel images. You could use whichever one, but just note that I renamed them travel dash one, travel dash two, etc. So now in my JSON file, I can change this one to like travel two. Same with this one here, travel three and travel four. And then I can just update the actual alt tag. So like this second one was like add gear same thing here again i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing this correctly let me know and then the third one let's just say h-u-m-a-y-n tomb i'm not even gonna try to pronounce this one and then i can just copy that and then the last but not least let's go here and let's just say d-u-n h-i-n-d-a false and then i'll copy this here so again this would be specific to your design or you could just leave it as default, doesn't really matter. But now what we can do is if we go back to the actual trips.js, so I'll go back here, we can pass this data into it utilizing GraphQL. So if you've never used GraphQL, let me show you. Command J, open terminal, control C to stop it. And then let's do Gatsby develop again. So since it's a JSON file, we don't have to import this at the top because it automatically will read this on our pay uh, our project. So once I show you, you see how we have the normal localhost 8,000. 
Then we have this thing called localhost slash underscore underscore GraphQL. Do command click on this. And it's going to open up this window here. So let me actually have previous stuff here. So let me drag this open. And then let me refresh this. And it looks like the JSON file is not displaying. So let me make sure that everything works out. So let me, let me see. So actually, yeah, let me check my uh, Gatsby config. And it looks like I'm missing the JSON plugin. So let me go ahead and let me add that real quick. So here I just Google Gatsby Transformer JSON. So let me click here and let me show you what we need to install so that I can read this. And now we just need to install this. So I'm going to go ahead and you can copy npm install Gatsby Transformer JSON. I have yarn, so I'm just going to do control C. I'm just going to say yarn add Gatsby trans former JSON. If you don't have yarn, just do the, what the um, docs say here with npm install. So I press enter here. So now it's installed. So what we need to do is make sure you're on your gatsby.config file. And then let me let me go under here. Let's see, let's erase this stuff here. And then under this, so we're like at the bottom of this um, right here in the plugins, we're inside of this array. And we're at the, the bottom, very bottom. And all you need to do is just copy this code under the plugin. So this line here, here, all the way until you reach the second or the last bracket or essentially the array. Copy this and then paste this. So make sure you have the backtakes, comma, and then the object or essentially resolves Gatsby source file system. So this is already have, we already have that here by default. And you can see it's like this. And then also you might want to add two. So let's go here on the top. And then just in case your videos aren't working, we can do command C, press enter, paste it. And then we can change this one to videos. So this is just a way for Gatsby to like see your videos and or essentially your files within your uh, project. So now we have this and then we have the data here. So if I save this now, what essentially is happening is Gatsby source file system, which you guys want to check out on the um, official docs. You can even see it's right here. It essentially looks inside your project at particular files. So you can see like this is more stuff on the actual docs on like the details on it. But for this example, we don't have to go too deep into that, but pretty much it's looking in the SRC and then in our data folder. So you can change this obviously, but here it looks in SRC data and then whatever we have here. So now if we run Gatsby develop now, uh, now once that's loaded, let me go back to GraphQL. So once this finishes up, when I refresh this, this should showcase the um, trips.json data. So right now, let's see what we have here. Gatsby source file system does not exist. So let me make sure I have this actually implemented. So it should be here on the package.json. Let's see, plugin, plugin. Yeah, so source file system. Then we got JSON sharp. So let me try this. Let's do control C. Let's do Gatsby clean. And then let's try Gatsby develop again. And let's see if that fixes the issue. So now it's still saying, oh, let's see, it's not just on your file system for SRC slash videos. Okay, so let's check that out. So I think, yeah, okay, I know why the problem is. So config, this should be for images, SRC slash assets slash images. And then good thing I caught that here. And then this should be SRC slash assets slash videos. So now that was the error because the images and videos are inside the SRC. Hold on. SRC here. And then it's inside the assets folder. And then it's there. So that's why I was missing that. So now this should work now. So let's do Gatsby develop again. And then once this loads up, everything should be working now, unless I mistyped something. So it looks like it's doing well. Let me just make sure. All right, so now it's finished. So now let me refresh GraphQL now. And boom, did you just see that? This is now currently displaying from the JSON file. So if I were to just click on trips.json. And also we have this thing called all trips.json. So let's actually click on this. And then we can go through here. Now, 
all of this, if this is your first time using GraphQL, you might be like, whoa, what is this? So don't really worry about this too much. Just all you need to know is how to access the things that you need from your data. That's all you really need to focus on for now. And then eventually you can figure out the rest of the uh, additional things later. But pretty much what happens is it drops down and shows you a bunch of options. So like if I click here on edges and then node, now you can see we have all of the things inside of the data, the, uh, the JSON file. So like the alt tag for the image, the button, and then we also have the name. And then if I hit the little play button right here, it's gonna show our data, which it, this is just a naming convention. By default, it just names it all trips dot, or an all trip JSON. And then it shows us edges and then node. And if you guys don't know like what edges are, nodes, etc., GraphQL has a lot of um, detailed docs explaining everything. But for now, I don't want to confuse you with what this exactly means and just to show you like how you actually get data. And then you can see like here the alt, the button, the name from our actual uh, data files. As you can see here. So if you did everything properly, it should show your data like this. And then also like the image. You click on the image and then let's see, we'll look for the SRC. Or essentially, let's see if it has the, um, let's see, public. Let's just check the public, you check the public URL for now. And you can see it says the image travel dash one, travel two, travel three, travel four, etc. So ideally, what you do is you do child image sharp and then you, I click fluid. There's also fix, but when you click fluid, essentially, this is what optimizes the image based off the screen uh, viewport you're on. And then here you can do SRC here as well. So now you can see the same concept, except in the actual code when we add a GraphQL, we're gonna be utilizing essentially this entire thing right here, this query right here. So if you're still confused, you're like I've never seen this before, you have no idea, don't worry, once we actually start adding it, it's all oh, make more sense. So let's head back over to VS Code. So let me screen shrink this right here. And let me actually, yeah, let's see. Maybe we don't have to read that really quick. But right now, let's go, let's exit off this config. And we can exit off pretty much everything except the trips.js file. So now you're probably wondering, how do we actually display this to our site? So let me, let me get rid of these extra pages here. All right, so here we are. So we have to import GraphQL and also gonna use a hook react, uh, use static query. So actually, let me let me bring that back up. So here on the docs, I just, just Google search really quick Gatsby use static query and you can read in the details of how this works, but essentially, let me just do it side by side. We need to import this at the top. So import use static query and also I'm going to import GraphQL and we're going to import this from Gatsby. Now we need to create the GraphQL inside of this actual trips function in order to utilize this. So here under the trips first line, let's do const then I'm going to call this data. I'm going to set this equal to use static query. And you can see right side by side, like just like the docs showing. And then what you do is you use parentheses and then say graph QL and then two back ticks and then go inside the back tick, press enter. And now we're inside this back ticks. And then what we need to do is essentially query the data. So I'm going to say query and then you can name this whatever you want to. I'm just going to call this trips query. You see on the docs, he called it header query. And then I would name it something that makes sense. And then in order to actually get this data, we have to utilize the name of this. So this is all trips JSON. So if I go back to GraphQL and I scroll all the way to the top, on the on this section on the left, it's called all trips JSON. So if I wanted to get like uh, all site, all, all files, etc. I would do all files, ex whatever which one you're trying to query. But this one is all trips JSON. So I'm gonna say all trips JSON. And then you do curly braces, enter. And then now you wanna target the data. So 
this one says site site metadata title so this is it you're doing like the um usually this is like for that seo but for here if we go here let me exit this off and show you drag this over here it's ultra json and what we could technically do is just straight copy this so let's just copy this in here this is ideally what um, people usually do and then we can just copy over this and then we can just change this to trips query here all trip json and see what happened essentially it targets the edges and then the node and then we have in our data so back to our uh where's my data file here we have img alt name and button so we have alt name button img and then we have child image sharp fluid and then src but usually what you do is you can just do dot 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 Gatsby image sharp fluid and this essentially it shows all the additional properties under here directly with just this line right there so before before we save this nothing's gonna happen yet but let's actually let's see what we need to do now is create a function to essentially push all of these data points into our page so let's actually create a function underneath here so i'm just going to call this one function and we can just say like get, get trips and then that parameter we're just going to pass in data and this is something i got off of um someone i saw a uh, function online so if you have a better way of implementing this definitely let me know but for right now let's just create an array so let's say const trips array and just set it equal to an empty array and if you're watching this right now you're like you're super confused don't worry because once we create this function and then i create the um it's starting to explain the data it'll start to make more sense but it, this might be confusing i can see if it might be confusing when you're first seeing this for the first time but pretty much now what we need to do is target the data so we're going to say data which is again this is this is the data and then we're going to say dot all trips json dot edges dot for each so now you're probably what is what is this so essentially we're targeting the data right here then we're going into the ultra json then we're going to go into the edges and then we're going to essentially go through all this data here so let's say for each and then you pass in the arrow function so let's do arrow function here I'm going to pass in item and index for my parameters here. And then we're going to call the array right here. So we say trips array, which we just created up there. And then we're going to say dot push parentheses. And then here we're essentially going to push all of our data. So let's actually, let me just do regular, like, uh, like just codes, like HTML tags, and then I'll change these to stock components after. So let's just say like div. And then let's press, actually, no, it doesn't look like it's working here. So let's just do div here. And then let's say inside this div, I don't have the image. So let's just say IMG. And also with Gatsby image, you have to import this at the top. So let's just say, go back to the top and let's just say import IMG from Gatsby image. And if you want to see more details on Gatsby image, just quick Google search their docs. They have a bunch of information on this, but IMG here. And then for the SRC, I want to do equal curly brace. And then I'm going to pass in the data. So we pass, we have here is item. So what I'm going to say is item dot. Then I'm going to look for the node. So now I'm going to inside here, I went from edges. Now we're the node. And then I'm going to say dot IMG dot child image sharp dot fluid dot what I want. So what I want to do is item.node.img so I'll bring this on the side so you can so you can see so essentially you just say dot dot whatever you're trying to access so if you actually um, access data before this should be too difficult to follow but I'm gonna say child image sharp and then dot fluid and then I want the SRC value here and then the curly brace and then also I pass in fluid so let me do command B you can see more equals to item.node.img 
dot child image sharp dot fluid. So this, and then you just close this out. So this is essentially the, um, looks like my div at the bottom, closing div here. So this is essentially this line, the fluid line makes it optimized based off of what you're using. So here we can pass in um, on this div, key equals to index, because Gatsby does not like not having a key. And then for now, that should be good enough. Let's actually, after this, let's go ahead and return this. So underneath here, let's just return trips array. And then for the wrapper, let's just do curly brace here and let's say get trips. So now we're using the function here and we're just gonna pass in the data. So let's save this for now and let's see what come up from this. So now you can see our images are displaying. So all this code we just added up here, this is GraphQL. If you've used Gatsby before, then you've seen this, so it's not too hard, but if this is your first time, this might be overwhelming. But after a couple of times you're going through this, you'll start to get used to it. And then here, I just created a function that essentially goes through the JSON the data and then essentially it returns the data. So we still have to finish this, but I just wanted to show you like the initial start. And then here at the bottom, I just created the uh, wrapper and then just passed in this function here. So now if I go and show you, this is currently what it looks like. So now we just basically got images using GraphQL and using Gatsby image. So if I right click this, and inspect it. You can see how all these images have like all this crazy properties on here. If normal normal code, it would just be like IMG tag and then like the SRC, but you can see like everything's essentially optimized for this. So that's utilizing GraphQL and Gatsby's image. Now let's go ahead and finish up styling this and then passing in the rest of the data. So here under IMG, I'm gonna start adding the um, stock component now. So let's just say product info. And then I'm gonna have text wrap here. And then here I'm gonna have I am location, which is a React icon. Then under there I'm gonna have product title. So the product title, this is gonna be item dot node dot name. So again, here node name JSON file, this is the name. Also, I think I forgot to add the alt too. So let's do, um, yeah, let's do alt equals to item.node and it should be, make sure node alt, yeah. Alt here. And then underneath the text wrap, let's pass in a button component. So button, so not like this. And then let's set the two value equal to slash trips. And then let's just say item dot node dot button. So again, button right there, item dot node dot button. And item again is this what we pass in here. You want to call this chicken taco or whatever, then you say chicken taco dot node dot button. But obviously you want something that makes sense. And then I want to change this div that we created originally. So you can do command D to highlight both of them. Press, actually, hold on. Yeah, see now it's highlight both. And let's just call this product card. And that should be all of it for that. So let's actually show how, oh, I think I scrolled this on accident. Let me bring this, bring this back right here. And now let's go ahead and add these. So let me close my terminal so you can see better. Let's add these to our styled components. So let's go ahead and start editing this. So we have part of card. Actually, let me just save this so you can see. All right, this is much better. So first let's do the product wrapper. Actually, let's, let's um do this. Let's do shift all down arrow. One, two, three, four, five. And then let's change this to product card. This one to product info product or let's see text wrap text wrap here i skip i am location as a react component and then let's do product title and then button 
But it's already, actually, you can erase this one. So, save this. One second, we have to save, let's see, product card doesn't look like I typed this in wrong. Okay. We've got the D product card here. And then let's import the button and then the stock, or not stock, the um, React icon. So let's say import. Looks like the button didn't auto import, so I gotta do it manually. And it's from dot slash button. Then also we have imports. I am location, which is just the uh, just a little icon right here, little location icon. And this is just from react dash icon slash I am. Let's save that here. And it looks like everything is displaying. So all we need to do now is just style this and then we are set. So let's go here. Let's add the product wrapper styles first. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and do display to be grid. And then I'm gonna say grid template columns. This one is going to be repeat for four comma one FR. So let's save that now. And I can see we got a little grid action going right here. And then let's do grid gap 10 pixels so now we have some little spacing in between them let's do justify items center here and then let's do padding 0 to rep and now let's add our media query so add media screen and max width of 1200 pixels I want the grid template columns to be 1FR, 1FR. So we'll save that here. And then let's do Command C again, paste that down. And then when this is, let's do 868. I want it just to be 1FR, which is actually one column. So now let's add the product card style. So here let's do line height to be two, the width to be 100%. Let's do height to be 500 pixels. Let's say position relative, border radius to be, let's do 10 pixels. And let's look at the spell border. And then last but not least, let's do transition to be 3.2 SEs. So I'll save that here. And now we got a little little border. Can't really see it yet because the um, image needs it. So let's actually do this. So um, product image. So what I'm actually gonna do, I forgot to create a product image. So let's say cons product IMG equal to style parentheses IMG, which is the Gatsby image. And then I'm gonna update this IMG we originally had and just call this product IMG. So I save it here. And then we can go inside here and then we can do height 100%. Let's do uh, max width 100%. And then let's do position absolute. Then I'm gonna do border dash radius 10 pixels as well. And then let's do filter do brightness let's do 70% and then let's add a transition let's do 0.4 s and then we can do like the shortcut cubic bezier how you want to say it and then just use that first option here and then on hover so and colon hover let's do filter brightness of Let's just say 100%. So now if I go and hover over the images, it has a little brightness, little hover action right there. And also you can see everything is rounded too. So now let's go here and I think, yeah, let's actually let me change this to relative, it should be relative. So let's see, you got the product info now. So that one's like invisible. So let's do display to be flex. Let's do flex direction, 
column align items flex my bad hold on see flex start and then let's do padding of zero to rem and then add media screen and max width to be 280 pixels and then that can just be padding of zero one rem so right now you can't really see anything because the images are hovering but essentially we just put it in the columns and then just made it start in the beginning and then text wrap so let's say display flex here align items center position absolute and let's do top of 375 pixels so now you can see that it's positioned right here and then for the title let's just do font weight 400 let's do font size 1 rem and then margin dash left to be 0 0.5 rem and you can't really see anything yet oh this is right here let's see go back to the top yes yeah, so everything looking fine right here and what we need to do actually and this is a cool little trick because that's pretty much the style components but the button you've noticed is still not it's not there so what's happening so what's cool is with stock components you can actually add css directly to these buttons without having to like put it globally like for instance we have like the button.js file here but if you have this reused like a million times and let's say on one page you want it to be like color yellow but you only have orange and blue on your button it's going to be a pain to write logic to make it like four or five different colors so here what we can do first is let's add some properties so let's just say prime equals true what happened? prime is equal true so let's go down here save that first and that's orange you can't really tell the background but it's there let's make it rounded equals true and then here we can say css so here you can say css equals to curly braces and then you do back ticks and then you can type in your css so like say position need to be absolute and then I need the top to be 420 pixels and then font size is going to be 14 pixels here now let's go ahead and let me add a heading so right here on the products heading we're gonna have this like a passing in dynamically so we can say like heading curly brace here and then I can pass in all the way at the top on the trips we're gonna say heading here and then I'm gonna save this and let's get rid of this red background. So background, maybe like this. And then the heading is up here. It's invisible because now we can go to index.js and on trips, we can say heading equals to our favorite destinations. Save it there. And now you can see that it passed in here. So now, this is what we got so far. It will hover in fact here, and then you can see we got the buttons and they link to essentially the trips page. And this is what we currently have created so far. And then when we shrink this, this is mobile, shrink it down, and then go back up, and this is what we have going on. So now let's go ahead and let's start creating the next section. So now let's go and let's go underneath this trip section here. And let's go ahead and create a, another component. So I'm just going to go to components, right click, new file. And then I'm going to say testimonials.js. So now here, let's just do R-A-F-C-E, press tab here. And then let's just say H1 testimonials, save that here. And then let's go to the index.js. And let's paste this in here. So let's do testimonials, command or control space, imports, and looks, let's see, fresh. Okay, yeah, I forgot. I need to do Gatsby develop because I stopped my server. And then once this loads, 
we can check it back out. So now let me go refresh and testimony looks perfect. Okay, everything's good. So now we're gonna utilize GraphQL again for this, but let's just create these style components. So let's just do import styled from style components. And then let's see, what do we need else? We have some React icons too and Gatsby image. So let's just go ahead and import IMG from Gatsby image. And then we can import, let's see, let's do, let's save that for later. Let's just add the style component for now. So in the return, let's get rid of this. Let's do testimonials container. This is gonna be, I'll call this one top line. And then this can be like test testimonials. And then under the top line, let's do description. Description here. And then let's just say what people are saying. And then under description, let's have the content wrapper. So then we'll have the content wrapper and then I have a column on the left and a column on the right. So I'll just call this one column one, just so you guys know like what's happening. And then in here, I'm gonna have the actual testimonial. So I'll take off the S here, testimonial. And then I'm actually gonna pass in a React icon. So let's do in here, let's say I O M D check mark circle outline. And then this is just a React icon, in case you're like, what is this crazy name? That's what they have it named as. And then I'm just gonna pass H3. So you don't have to have everything as a stock component. You can just straight up pass in like regular HTML tags. And then I can just say like, Sean Michaels. And then under here, I'll just say like a P tag. And then say V greatest experience of my life. You can just do Lorium. If you don't want to type this, you can say like Lorium 10, tab it. And then you have like filler text. But for me, let me just paste my um, my description in just because save time. And then let's do command B, you can see this. And then we can just copy and paste this again. So we have testimonial again. And then I'm just gonna paste this under this. And then here we can just change the name. So this can be like, uh, just put like Sarah came right here. And then let me just paste in my description. So you can do the Lauren uh, for the text you want to. And then this, this uh, icon right here is just gonna be F-A-R-E-G light bulb. And then under column one, we're gonna create column two. And then here's where we're actually gonna pass in the images. So for instance, let's just put IMG for now. And actually let's just put, um, just type IMG for now. And then we got to, let's save this so we can see all of our errors so we can add this. So let's do the easiest ones first, which are the React icons. So we can just say at the top import, IO MD check mark. So it auto fills here for me from react dash icon slash IO. And then let's do import import FA reg light bulb from react dash icon slash FA. Save that there, so now we should fix some of these. And then we can just go here and just say const. And then let's see our first one we have. Let's do testimonials container equal to style.div with the back ticks. And then let's see, we got shift all down arrow. So we got one top line description, content wrapper, column one, testimonials, column two. Then also gets the image, so I'm gonna say image here. So let's actually uh, just edit these. So we have top line. 
And then we have description. And then we got content wrapper. And then we got column one. Then we got testimonial. Oh, what happened? And then we got column two. And also, I think Gatsby image is not going to run the error. Let's see. Did I do it twice? Oh, yeah, it was I did it twice. So let's save this here. Okay, perfect. All right, so this is what we got so far. And now what we need to do is add some style. So let's go ahead and I want to add the images first because it's going to be hard to see the styles if you don't have the, uh, the thing. But let's do it just for the actual container. Let's just start this first. So let's just do uh, like width 100%. Is it here and then let's do a uh, background let's say hashtag fc 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 let's do color hashtag zero zero padding five rem calc of 100 viewport width minus 1300 pixels divided by two and then height equals to 100 percent stay there for now and then you can see like very slightly backgrounds, not like perfectly uh, white, but obviously you can have, you can change that. It doesn't really matter. And then let's just edit top line since it's just right there. We can add this pretty quick. Just save the color to hashtag 077BF1. Let's do font size of one RAM. Let's do padding dash left of two rem and margin dash bottom of 0.75 rem. So we got that there. Description, we can just edit this one. So let's see. So first of all, the top line, let me make that a P tag. Oh, I have that. That a P tag here. Description can also let's make this a P tag here. And let's say, Text align to be start, padding dash left to be two rem, margin dash bottom to be four rem, font size is clamp of 1.5 rem, five you put width, two rem, and then font weight is bold. And then for the content wrapper, let's do Display grid, grid template columns, 1FR, 1FR, padding 0 to rem, at media, screen and max width of 768 pixels, and then grid template column 1FR. So you can see now, we don't have images, so obviously it's not showing, but this is obviously where the images would be. And then let's, for the column one, we can edit this one too. So let's say uh, display to be grid, grid template columns, one FR, one FR. And then also let's see testimonials. So under here, we can say Padding dash top one rem, padding dash right two rem, and then inside we can do the nesting. So I can set like H3. I want the margin dash bottom to be one rem, font size 1.5 rem, font style italic. So let's see, let's see if the, um, looks like it didn't. Testimonial H3, yeah. So let me share that. Um, oh, yeah, that's why. I said font size, not style. So font style. There we go. And then just P tag. Let's just make it like a little faded color. So hashtag 3B, 3B, 3B. 
and that's what we have here. And let me might as well add the com two because um, let me just show you. So let's go do column two. Let's just say display. Let's just do grid. Grid template columns one fr one fr. Margin dash top two rem. Grid gap two or ten pixels. Should be dash. And then let's say at media. Let me close this out. Screen and max width of 500 pixels. Then curly braces do grid template columns. And let's say 1FR. And then let's say const images equals to style of the Gatsby image with the back ticks. And let's just say border radius of 10 pixels. And then just set the height to 100%. So I just added the, uh, just these two images here. So it's just a typical display grid, but we need to go here and change this. So this needs to be image or images where we named it. So here we have to actually map through this. So for now, let me just, uh, let's just do images. And then let me just close it out for now because nothing's going to show up, but here is when we utilize GraphQL again. So now, if I go back and let's go to our GraphQL, and if you don't have this link, just do uh, OMV terminal again. And tell you can reach out the server. So if you wanna just do like control C, restart it. Or if you wanna just save time, you can just do localhost and have all this crazy, uh, you can just do localhost colon 8000 slash underscore underscore GraphQL. And if I delete all of this, press enter, it also leads me to here. So again, if you don't have that, just do command click right there. So if you open GraphQL, it's most likely gonna show your previous query. So we can actually just go here. Let's drag this out. And let's just go and see, got our queries here. Let me actually close this out. And let's click on Explorer. And what we want to click on this time isn't so you know we're not gonna we're not gonna be targeting our JSON data anymore. We're just gonna go straight through all of our files. Now the issue is we need the images first. So actually that is something we need to drag in. So let me just show you again where you can get images. So if you just go to Pexels, that's one website, you can just type in like um portrait or yes, yeah, make sure it's spelled right. Portrait here. And then you can find a two pictures of people. You can make the orientation vertical. And they can see there's a bunch of like nice photos of people in like portrait mode. So like this guy, you could use this person. And then just go here, find two images, or you can just type in like guy or girl and they'll also show up too. But you can see there's like a bunch of images you can find here. Or we can just go ahead and like do like, um, you know, guy, let's see. Yeah, type guy, girl, etc. cetera, you get the point. And just pick any of these images. Like this one would look cool for like a, um, since it's like a travel site. But I did, I pick ones that had like, like people actually looking at the camera. So again, you can just find it, hit there and go through it. But I'm gonna go ahead and actually uh, go back to my VS Code. And let me drag in my images really quick so that we can save some time here. So let's go ahead and go ahead while I'm doing this, find your, you just need two images or you can just use your like literal travel pictures too if you don't wanna sit there and do that now. But I guess it all depends on what you're trying to do. So here I had actually, yeah, let's do, let's drag these in uh, from assets into the images folder. And I'm already gonna save some time. I'm just gonna drag in the remaining two images I have for the email just to save some time. But all I did was I just found like two images for travel. So again, you can just use travel again and then just literally like this is like a picture of the ocean. So here I have testimonial dash one, testimonial dash two. These are those two you need for now. And then these later two we'll add later. But if you want to save some time and do it now, you can find two more images that have essentially a, um, a travel background. Technically you only need one, but I was testing out like two different images for this background, but this is just in case you want to do it now. 
But you don't really have to worry about that. But the thing is now, let's refresh. And let me see if, um, let's see if Grab GrabQL can actually find this. And if not, we might just have to restart this. So let's roll, let's go to all files now. And then we go to edges and then node. And then we go try to sharp fluid. And then let me click SRC and then let's hit the play button. So now if I drag this out, let's shrink this. Let's see. So you have testing 101, test 102, email one, email two. Okay, so not showing the new images I added. If you didn't add the you know, two other Im images, then you don't have to worry about this. But as long as you have two images here showing testimonial one and two, then that's working. And now you notice that it has this like uh, this error, like these four errors right here. And these are actually, let me shrink it back. One is we have two videos that it's like, it just can't read it. So what you want to do is you want to make sure, this is a cool thing with GraphQL you can do is, uh, let's go here. If we go back to the top, right where we clicked it, we can filter. So you can click filter here. And essentially we can filter for a specific thing. So for me, they have two different options. They have this one thing. Let me see if I can find it. X, EXT, so essentially the extension. And then you have these, there's like six different options here. And Gatsby has like a uh, docs showing like what exactly these mean. But for here, they just regex. And this is essentially, this is just some code. So if I type in like slash parentheses JPG, and then I can do shift this right under the backspace button on my laptop, little straight bracket and then we can do parentheses p and g and they're going to do straight bracket again and then we can do parentheses j j e p g so now if you understand this is pretty self-explanatory but it's just essentially just filtering out just for images with this so I hit player right here it looks like it's not going to work so let me let me make sure i have everything probably my spacing might have to fix that let's see if that fixes it Okay, NFX structure, JPG. So I think I forgot the slash. Yeah, I forgot the slash at the end. So let's do slash here. And perfect, now it looks like it's working. So now what's returning is only images that have JPG, PNG, or JPEG. So I only have JPEGs. So now you see that original, the error with the nulls, those are gone. And also I don't want to get all these images, right? I only want these two portraits I have here. I don't care about these four up here or like the other image down here. So another trick is you can do is go back on the filter here and let's look for the name. So names here. And if you're probably wondering like how in the world do I know what exactly to click on? Well, that just takes time and takes hours of just messing around GraphQL and just Google searching stack overflowing. Because first off, when you see this, you're like, oh my gosh, it's insane. But ideally, all you need to know is like what you need to click to get what you need back. There's a bunch of other stuff, but it's really, you don't need to know it unless it's necessary for you for using it. But here we can use name. And this is just a way you can filter this. I'm sure there's other ways, but I want to filter and only look for a testimonial one and testimonial two. So I see there. So we can go to name and then you can do I N essentially think of it as like including. And then I'm gonna do the array brackets here. So actually let me, let me press enter so you can see better. So in here, let me type there. And then I do quotes test demonial dash one, comma quotes test demonial dash two. And I think I forgot the quote on here. Let's see, it yeah, quotes here. Let's see what happened. Why is that red? Oh yeah, I need the quotes here. And then, this looks like there's a quote on the outside of the array that shouldn't be there. And also this one shouldn't be there. So it should just be in colon, array, testimonial, quotes, okay, dash one, testimonial, dash quotes, dash two. So now if I hit play, now you can see we only have two images now. So that's perfect. So now what we need to do, we can just straight up copy this 
drag this back, go to our page, and then under the testimonials function inside, let's do cons data equal to use static query parentheses graph ql backtick backtick inside here i'm just going to paste this and then i can just delete the query and sometimes for some reason vs code like makes this like invisible but it still works so i don't know why maybe that's just like a bug on my my computer but then all we need to do now is just import this uh with graphql as well and then we just need to map through this so now let's scroll down to our column two and then let's just do the brackets and let's say data dot all file dot edges dot map just like we did it before originally except this time we're mapping through this and then we're going to do an arrow function here and then we're just going to pass in so let me bring this images command x paste it in here and then we need to pass in for the parameters. Let's do image and then key. And then here, I wanna make the key equal to key. And then I'm gonna say fluid equals to image dot no dot child image sharp dot fluid curly brace. And then we should save that and that should display the images. So let's see. Did I forget? Oh yeah, this should be a parentheses. So instead of curly braces, this should be parentheses. Same thing here. Save that there. And then let's refresh. Let's actually do, um, yeah, we need to actually go, with, yeah, should we find here? So let's do control C, run Gatsby develop again, see if that fixes. So now let me go here and just refresh. And it looks like my images aren't showing. Oh, there they are. So there they are right now. They just shrink so i guess that's just like a styling problem but at least you can see our images are here and when i inspect it they are optimized and also just remember i think i added the um i think i added the src to the uh let's go back to the where is it at trip section yeah so i don't think we, we don't actually need this really. let me just make sure let's see because i think Gatsby fluid should um yeah we should be fine with that so we don't need that right now so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and delete this part here. Let me control C just to make sure everything's working fine. And that should be fine here. But we can also check the, uh, let's see, trip.json, yeah, yeah, image. Testimonial, we're fine here, and then trips, and then we can refresh, let's see. Yeah, so image is still displaying, so that's good to see. So I think it's just the CSS now on the, um, testimonials image seems like I'm missing something so let me go and find out why the styling isn't doing what I want to see so I figured out the issue was this should be on column one grid template rows so I'll save that there and then this for the Gatsby GraphQL query this should be dot 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 Gatsby image sharp fluid. So we'll save this here. And now you can see the images are here. And then we shrink it like this. And then last but not least, let's add a custom CSS to the icon. So let's just go to like this bulb under testimonial. Let's say CSS equals to curly braces, back ticks, color hashtag 3FFFA8 font size to rem, margin dash bottom to be one rem. Save that there. And actually I want this to be on the, this one. And then I want to change the FA light bulb to be, could I put this one? F nine B one nine B. So you can see it looks like this, and I just paste this one into this IOMD. So now we go here. So far we have hero, little uh, product image testimonial trip section, and then here's the testimonials right here. And then we basically can shrink that. And you can see it's nice and responsive.
So there's a simple testimonial section. And again, just to show you inspect Gatsby image, everything's optimized. So now let's go ahead and create the next section. So now let's create the stats section or essentially right here, like why they should choose us. So let's go ahead and go down to components, new file, and let's just call this one stats.js. Now you can call this whatever you want to, but let's just keep it simple. Now here, let's go ahead and let's just do RAFCE. And then let's go and for this one, we could put this in the data file, but also I just want to show you that we can also keep it in the file too. So again, there's like a hundred million ways you could probably do this. I say a couple, not hundred million, but there's a lot of ways you could do this to where you can pass in data map through it. But for now, let's just do the typical style components for now. So let's make sure we import styled. Make sure I spell this right from stock components. And then let's return command D to highlight both of them. And let's just call this stats container. And then we can say, let's just call this heading Y choose us. And then under the heading, we can make a wrapper. So let's just call it wrapper. And then here we'll actually map through some data. So we'll just leave that for now. And then let's just add in some stock components for just so that the error doesn't show up. So let's do const stats container equal to style.div with some back ticks, shift all down here to copy it one, two times. Let's call this heading. And then this one, we can name this. Let's see, just put each one here. And then let's have stats container change this to wrapper. All right, so for the stats container, let's just do, just say width of 100%, like that. And then let's do um, background, just make it white. Color, hashtag zero, zero. Display is flex. Let's do flex direction column. And then let's do justify content. Content to be center and then padding forum calc 100, or actually do parentheses 100 report width. Minus 1300 pixels divided by two. Save that for now. And right now you can't see anything yet. And we actually have to let's import the um, stats in the index.js on the pages. So I just call this stats, close it out. And then here we got this heading, let's edit this. Let's put uh, text align to be start, font size clamp, 1.5 rem, five viewport width, comma, two rem. Let's do margin dash bottom to be three rem. And then padding zero to, yeah, zero to rem. And then wrapper, let's put this one, display grid, grid template columns, repeat. And we're gonna have four columns, so I'm gonna say four comma one FR. And then let's say grid gap of 10 pixels. And then let's just have the media query. So at media screen and max dash width of essentially it's eight pixels. And we just do, let me copy this, paste and just change this to 1FR. And then let me paste this again. And let's put this at 500 pixels. So right now you can't see anything because it's, um, we haven't added data, but let's go ahead and actually, let's create that. So here, let's do this. We had some React icons in here, so let's do import and we have this icon called GI Earth 
America from react dash icon slash gi. Let's do shift all down arrow one, two, three times more. Let's erase this. Let's do MD airplane mode active. And then it's just gonna be MD. And then here we'll have MD timer. Actually, I could put this in the same thing. So we could just do MD timer here since they're both from MD. So let me delete that. And then this one will be FA money check. That's equal to FA. So now we could create a data file in the data, but let me just show you this another way in case you just wanted to see. You just do like cons stats data equal to the array. Then we have the objects and we're gonna have the icon and we're gonna pass in the actual icon. So we do parentheses and since it's just a component, you're gonna have to do it like this and then just pass in GI Earth America. And I want this to, let's start this after, let's just do this for now. And that's how we do right there. And then we have a comma and then title will be over 100 destinations. And then we have the ESC and then just say travel, let's see, travel to over 100 unique places. And then I can just add a comma here. We can just copy and paste this three more times. So one, two, three, change this one to Let's just do MD airplane. Let's change this one to MD timer. And this to FA money check. So now let me change this one to one million trips made. Here will just be over one million trips completed last year and let me fix that here this one will just say fastest supports and then we'll do access our support team 24 7 and then here we have best deals and then we got, we offer the best prices. All right, so now if I save this, nothing's gonna happen because we didn't do anything with the data, but ideally you could, we could just, you know, copy this exact thing, put this in a data file just like this, export it, it's the exact same thing. But I just wanted to show you in case you have like little tiny things. I'll, I'll probably oh, I'll separate that in a second, but for now let's just keep it like this just so you can see it. And then the wrapper go here and then we'll just map through this. So we'll just do curly brace and what do we call this stats data? Yeah, stats data. So stats data dot map, pass in the arrow function. And then we have to return and I'm gonna return stats box, which is another stock component. And then we have to pass in key of index for this. And then we'll have the icon, which will just be item dot, dot icon. And again, you have to pass in parameters or icon or I, my bad, item and index. And then here, let me just do command shift down or con control shift down arrow or not shift, control option shift down arrow. I keep saying it wrong. And then we can do command D. This can be a uh, title. And then we just have to change this to lowercase. And then here we can do command D again. It should be description. And then this would just be DESC, DESC. So now all we need to do is just add these to our styles. So now let's go down here. Let's do cons that's box equal to style dot div with the back ticks shift alt down arrow 
icon title description and actually description I think we can keep it as um yeah we can just keep it but ideally we don't even need to add styles to it but in case you wanted to we can we can add it later but let's just do this so change this to icon change this to title and this one just be description so I save this now and right now we see nothing yet so let's go to stats box well actually yeah, here we go so now it's all the data we just created mapping through it so now we can just style this so let's do here heights 100% let's do width 100% padding to rem transition 0.3s and then actually let's remove the transition i had a hover effect on it but i just kept took it out so let's take that out icon let's do font size of 3 rem margin dash bottom of 1 rem title we can just do font size of clamp 1 rem comma 2.5 before height 1.5 rem and then we'll just do margin dash bottom of 0.5 rem and description is a p tag but uh well, there's no style for this i don't have anything but you can obviously go in here and edit that add it whatever you want to if you'd like to if not you can just change it to a p tag it's up to you and then let's add the color separate so you're probably wondering like how do you add a uh, a color to this icon if you're mapping through like a data like so imagine you have 100 icons how would you add specific colors like in the original one like here so this is again we can utilize css so we can just do uh css equals curly brace back ticks and we can just say color hashtag 047bf1 so now if i save that this should change this color to blue so let me copy this css paste it into every icon here save it now they're all blue right now so let's change the md to um airplane let's change that one to f3a82e this next one let's do f34f2e and then for this last one let's just do 3af576 and now you can see we have all our colors and I think I should have added on the uh, let's see title where is it at should change that to um, change it to a p tag shouldn't be a div and then we can also I think on the original yeah keep it like this actually yeah can I change the font yeah okay this is the original and then let's do here okay yeah so it looks the same so now this is what we created so far and then shrink it looks like this boom now it's like this and that's how it's like that so now if you wanted to add styling like change this font you know bigger so like font size 1.5 rem you can go ahead and do that but again i don't have any font size for this that's just i have just have that there just so that we don't have the error and that's pretty much how simple it is now you can actually take this data and if you wanted to you can like cut this out create a separate data file in your data folder and then you just have to import this stuff here so let me actually just do this for you so you can see it so let's just call this that's data.js and then we can just go here, command X, paste it here, make sure we export this, and then let's take all of our icons and also command X that there, paste that here, we save this here, and then let's save this here, and then we can do import, let's do stats data from dot where is it at dot dot slash data slash that's data 
So now let's see. React must be in a scope and using JSX. So now let's actually do IR. And now we have the exact same thing within our stats page, except this time it's it's separate. So again, this is depending if you're trying to create this from scratch, it's probably easier to do it the first way I showed you. Just so you don't have to sit there and go back, click it, import it, go back here, and it's just a pain. So that's just one way you can go about that. And again, that's, there's so many ways to do this. And then we can actually try to control C. Let's do Gatsby clean. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do Gatsby develop again, just to make sure like if any errors or issues happen that I can tell before I go too far. And then as you know it, I have this like whole broken website. All right, so now I'll just go ahead and refresh. Command, Shift C, check my console, no errors. So looking nice, looking good. So far we have this created. So we got the hero section, the cards, trips, we got the testimonials, and now we got the little data. Why would they choose us? And now let's go ahead and let's do the email little sign up form section, which is right here below next. So let's create the email section right now. So I'm gonna go over to components. Just right click this, hit new file. And let's just call this email.js. And then here we're going to do R-A-F-C-E, press tab. And let me bring, let's go back to the original website here. And then let's just say H1 email, save this. And then let's go to index.js. Let's pass in email, press control space, enter. Is it imported? It's imported there, save it. And then we got email in there. So now we can go to email JS. So here I'm just gonna say import styled from style components. And then let's go ahead and I'm going to utilize just a regular image for this because usually Gatsby image is really good if it makes sense, but there's always cases where it might be overkill or it just might be very difficult to implement. So for this sake, I'm just gonna import the image that we're gonna be using on the actual image SRC tag, just like a normal way you import. So I'm just gonna say imports, let me call this like email, we can call this like email BG, equal or from dot dot slash assets slash images slash email. And I have email to .jpg. So again, remember we imported uh, images and I was saying how I have, uh, also have this folder here. So we could do, we can actually, let's drag these images here. So I've got this as part of the original uh, Gatsby, let's see here, assets images. And then obviously this, we don't really need these images, but let's just keep it for now. Let me delete this folder here. This was the default one that comes with it. So we don't need that. But uh, here, let's go. And on my images, I imported two different uh, uh, background images I'm gonna use. So you can, if you haven't already, go ahead, go back to Pexels or any website where you can get images. And then this is the one I'm using, email two is the one I named it. And it's just like a background with like a, um, like a kayak. And then we can also, let's see. Yeah, we'll be good for now. So now let's just add the stock components now. So let's go ahead and here, it's just going to be the email container. And then inside of this, we're gonna have the email content. And then here we're gonna put an H1, just to, um, I don't have to make, you don't have to make everything a stock component, but I'm just gonna say get access to X. Exclusive offers, get that space. And then let's have a P tag here. And let's just say sign up for our news letter below to get $100 off your first trip. And then under the P tag, we're gonna say form. Let's just put the action equal to just hashtag for now. Now this isn't something that's implemented with like backend or receiving anything, but it's just there for the UI for now. Let me just call this form wrap. And then inside the form wrap, 
I'll have like a label right here. So actually just do normal label and let's just say for email. And then inside the label, we'll just do input type email. Let's set the placeholder equal to, let me close out my window. Enter your email. And then I'll just send ID to email here. And then under the label, let's just put the button component. So I enter and then auto import. So let me do um, control space, press enter here. And then we can just say like, uh, let's see, sign up should work. Sign up. And then we're pretty much good with that part. So let's just go ahead and create the actual styling now. So let's go here. Let's do const email container equal to style with the back ticks. And then here, let's see. So the way I did this, let's actually me control Z. Let's do the shift alt down arrow again. So let's save this really quick so we get the error so we can see what we're missing. So we need one, two, three, and then we can change this. Let's see what we have. Email content. We got email. Let's see, what else is that? Oh, we got form wrap. Form wrap, and I think that should be, yeah, I should be fine with that. So let's do this. Save it, and then email BG is gonna be undefined, but it doesn't matter. So now we got that. So now I'm gonna say background, linear gradient, parentheses, and then inside here I'm gonna say 180 degrees, comma, RGBA, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.5, and it's gonna be 0%. And then I'm gonna do comma, and I'm just gonna copy this two more times. So after that, I'm gonna do it again, and then again. And then for the next one, I want this percentage to be 35%, and this last one to be 100% at 0 0.1. So essentially, I want like the top part of this background to be darker just so the text is easier to read. And then the bottom's like more, more showing just the image. And then after this, we'll do a comma. And then the URL we're gonna pass in is gonna be dollar sign curly brace email IMG, which is what we imported up here and called it. Or actually my bad, email BG. And then we're gonna say no dash repeat and then center. So we save this here. We have now the image as a background. And then all we need to do is just say background, say, say cover height 450 pixels with 100%. Uh, padding 5 RAM calc 100 viewport width minus 1300 pixels divided by 2. Let's do color hashtag FFF. Then let's do display is flex. Justify content center align items center. Save this here. And now that's what we got going on here. So now let's do email content. And then here we can just say display is flex. Then we have flex direction column align items center then we have the h1 text align center margin dash bottom one rem font size is clamp one rem five viewport width comma three rem and then let's do padding of zero one rem and then under h1 we'll have the p tag I'll just say text align is center, font size is clamp of one rem, 2.5 per width, 1.5 rem. And then let's just do padding of zero, one rem, and then margin dash bottom of two rem. And then we'll have form Z index of 10. And then last but not least, let me save this really quick. 
And then the form we'll just do, let's see, input. We're gonna do curly braces. I'm just gonna say padding. One rem by 1.5 rem. Outline is none with 350 pixels. Height is 48 pixels. Border radius is uh, 50 pixels. Then we got border is none. And then margin dash right is one rem. And then under that, we'll do the media query. So add media screen and max width. And that's gonna be 768 pixels. And then here I'm just gonna say display flex. We're gonna have flex direction is column. And then padding zero one rem. And then under there we'll put input again and we'll just say margin dash bottom one rem with 100% and then margin dash right of zero. So now it doesn't look perfect because we got to add these styles to the button, but basically you see this is what we got so far. Let me shrink it up like this. So now we can go and add some more styles. So for the button right here, let's set the, I'm gonna save this as a button. So this is a cool little thing is you can change the, uh, the tag. So essentially it's originally a link so that it goes the path. But this one, I want this to be not a link, but just like a normal button. And then type equals to submit. And also for like this as equals, you can change it to like anything, H1, H2, et cetera. Then that's just a cool way to change uh, certain things on stock components without having to like manually recreate it and passing it globally. So that's a pretty cool trick. And then let's just set the primary equal to true. Set round equal to true. And then let's set the CSS equal to curly brace with the back ticks. Height is gonna be 48 pixels. And then let's save that for now. And I wanna change the media grid. So after the height, let's say at media screen and max dash width of 70 pixels. And then we're gonna have width of 100%. Min width be 350 pixels. And then we'll just copy this again. And then pretty much we'll just say 250 pixels. And this is gonna be like 400. So right now this is what we got going on. We'll shrink it, and this is what we have so far. So this really pretty much is the email section right here. This one's pretty simple, not too difficult to make. And then let's go ahead and let's start creating the footer, which we have right here. So now let me go control B, and let's create the footer in the components folder. All right, so let's go to components, new file. Let's call this one footer.js. And the usual RAFCE, press tab. And then let's just go ahead and let's just add in, let's just say H1 footer, save it here. And instead of passing this into our index.js like we normally do, we're actually gonna go to our layout.js. And I'm just gonna add this underneath the, uh, every all of the content here. And this import, yeah, this imported. And now every page that has essentially layout, like page two, et cetera, the ones we create in the future, they will always have the content inside the layout.js, which would be the header, footer, and then everything inside of it too. So now it's working here. So now let me go back to footer. Let me actually close out all of these. Just go back to footer here. And this one's pretty easy. It's just pretty much style components and styling it. And ideally, if you make like your own personal site, you wouldn't have this many links. Maybe, who knows? But if you're making like a bigger site, probably. But let's just go ahead and just go forward. So let's just say footer container. 
and let's say footer let's just call this uh footer actually i have to name them out so you can see it footer links wrapper and i'll just make these like super long descriptive so that you can understand it but if you want to go in your own code and refactor this to make it shorter then feel free to do that let's say footer this would be just the um description with like the logo and everything so i can just say here like explorix and then let's just put paragraph and say we strive to create the best experiences for our customers and then underneath this description we'll have the footer link item so footer link items and then we'll just have the footer link title which is essentially like contact us about us etc and then under here we're gonna have let's see we have footer link so these are the individual links now and there's gonna say equals to you slash about whatever whatever um, page you wanted to link to you put that and then you can just say like contact and then I'll just copy this down and let me just erase this so it's shorter code and then we can just say here let's just put like supports and then here you can just do this two more times let me close this out and you can just change this one to like destinations and then here we can just pay like sponsorships and now what we can do after that is so here's the footer links wrapper right so we have the descriptions inside of here and then we have the footer links item but now what i want to do is go under the footer links wrapper again and do it again so footer links wrapper and the reason is we're doing essentially a grid system so that's essentially two columns like on the original design these are essentially wrapped once and these are wrapped once so it's essentially desktop it's one two two columns side by side but it looks like it's four individual columns but it's actually just two boxes and then when it shrinks it it just puts them on top of each other that way it's just easier for making it responsive so here and then inside here we can just straight copy the um footer links item stuff here so let's just copy this paste it once and twice and then you can obviously go ahead and change this to like um just say like videos and then social media. Now I'm just gonna copy in my code just so to save some time. And all it is is just updating the um, what do you call it? The the actual text inside. But you can go in there individually and do that yourself too. And I just change the text inside here. So now this is pretty much all the JSX. So let's import this styled from style components. Also, we're gonna use link, so let's say imports link from Gatsby. And then let's say const footer container equal to style.div with the back ticks. And let's save this for now. Let's see how many errors pop up. Okay, so we got footer description, footer link, footer link wrapper. Footer link items, footer link title. Let's see if that does everything. Well, actually, yeah, it shouldn't be. So let's just change these up now. So let's do footer DSC. And then let's do uh, footer links wrapper. And then let's try, let's see, footer link items. And then here we can change this to footer link. And let me see if that's all of them. Save this real quick. So footer link title is still there. So now let's do that one too. So let's just do this under alt shift down again. Footer, let's see what we got. Footer link title. All right, so now everything's good now. So now we have everything showing up here. So now let's add our styles. So start with this first one. Just say padding, five RAM, calc, 100 view per width, minus 1100 pixels. So I'm making this smaller just because um, 
I like the footer look design like that. To say display to be grid. Grid template columns to be repeat. And you say two comma one fr. Color hashtag zero zero zero. Background is going to be hashtag f a f a f b. So now we have some grid action going on here. So this is what it kind of looks like. So these are basically stacked on top. So let's do the footer description real quick. So let's say padding is going to be 0 to rem. And then the h1, let's do h1. And let's say margin dash bottom is going to be 3 rem. And the color is going to be hashtag F26A2E. And then underneath that be at media screen and a max width is going to be 400 pixels. And then we'll have the padding to be one rem. So let's see. Yeah, and here we go. We got the little change right there. And now let's do the um, footer links wrapper. So essentially, display is going to be grid, and then grid template columns will be a repeat two comma one fr, and then at media screen and max width going to be eight hundred twenty pixels, and then we're going to say grid template columns of one fr. And then under heat here, let's do display flex. So I'm gonna say display flex. Then I'm gonna say flex direction is gonna be column. Then we're gonna have align items going to be flex start. And then we'll set the padding to one rem by two rem. Add media, screen, and max width of 400 pixels and then set the padding to one rem and then for the link title we'll just say font size to be 14 pixels and margin dash bottom to be 16 pixels and if I say that it should change up a little bit and then last but not least let's target the footer link and actually, okay, so the title, this should be an H2. And I believe everything else is divs. Yeah, we're fine with that. So this one's going to be a link, the Gatsby link. And then we'll just say text decoration to be none. Margin dash bottom to be 0.5 rem. Font size is going to be 14 pixels. Color is going to be hashtag 3D3D4E. Oh, have it. 4E. And then, and, hold on. And colon hover is going to be color hashtag F26A2E. Transition is going to be 0.3S. Ease out. So now we got a little footer and we got a little hover with the color there. So that wasn't too bad. And again, this is just a little template design. Feel free to refactor the code any way I named it. Also, I'm sure you could make this into like an array and then like map through and everything. But I think it just makes it super easy to just go here and change stuff right there. And then you can also utilize this for your own website. So if you want to like replace this section with icons instead, you can just you know create your own little div here and just replace these with icons and then vice versa etc whatever you like to do so so far this is what we have created so far so we have almost everything the last thing i want to show you before we get into the fancier things is the sidebar so right now the sidebar or aka the menu mobile menu if it drops down be a drop down but basically the mobile menu is not created yet so what I want to do is show you guys how to create the mobile menu now. 